Many of the mechanical parts you'll be building in SOLIDWORKS will have some type of helical components. The most common component that uses a helix curve is a spring. It can either be a mechanical compression spring, an extension spring, or even a torsion spring, like the one used as a hand gripper like this. Today we will learn how to use the helix curve command by building two parts, a common compression spring and the hand gripper shown. For the first part, we'll use some basic knowledge about compression springs, such as free length, solid length, hitch, and number of coils. So I suggest watching this 2-minute excerpt from the 10-minute video on Mechanical Springs Basics first, link below, so that you're more familiar with some of the terminology. The first spring we will build today is the spring from this 2-minute example from the Spring Design main lecture. Link below if you want to check that out. We have a spring that has a wire diameter of 2.5 millimeters, a coil diameter of 28.5 millimeters, and 13 revolutions. Considering the maximum stress that the spring can be subjected to, the free length is calculated to be 164.1 millimeters. And now that we have the mechanical design of the spring, we want to create the part in SOLIDWORKS. To do this, we'll create a helical curve, which basically means a 3D sketch in the shape of the spring, and we'll use it as the path for a circular sweep. The link to the sweeps video is down below if you haven't watched that already. And that's about it. So we'll make it a tad more complex than that in a second. To create the helix itself, we go into Insert, then Curve, and then we select the Helix Spiral option. This command will first ask us for a plane on which to create the shape of the coil, meaning a plane to draw the sketch of a circle, which serves as the helix cross-section. If we want the spring to have a vertical axis like this, we select the top plane and we create a circle centered at the origin. Since the coil diameter is 28.5 millimeters, we smart dimension this circle, which is the circle for the helix, to be 28.5. It is worth pointing out here what was mentioned in that Springs Basics video, that neither the inner diameter nor the outer diameter are the same as the coil diameter. The coil diameter is the average between the inner and the outer ones. If a part is dimensioned with the outer diameter, for example, because that's what we can easily measure in real life with a caliper, we would have to subtract a wire radius on both ends from the outer diameter value to find the coil diameter. Or what is the same, subtract one wire diameter. But again, in this case, since we already have the coil diameter, this is what we need to draw the circle of the helix for our spring. We exit the sketch and the helix command macro will resume, asking us now for two of three parameters. The three parameters are the pitch, the number of revolutions, and the height, not exactly the same as the free length. Notice that we only need two of the three because we would always be able to calculate the remaining third. For example, if we have the pitch, which is the distance between coils, and the number of coils or revolutions, we could multiply them to find the distance from one end of the helix to the other. With this equation, the third unknown variable can always be found. This is why SOLIDWORKS only asks for two out of the three parameters. From what we were given, we see that we can find the height of the helix by subtracting a wire diameter, one radius on each side, from the free length. The second parameter we have here is the number of revolutions. Therefore, under the Defined By section, we select Height and Revolution. The height being 161.6 millimeters and the number of revolutions being the total number of coils 13. We input this into SOLIDWORKS, we click OK, and we have our helix. Now remember how in the previous video, the one where we went over how to make sweeps, we created a second sketch of a circle or a ring to sweep a path with? Link below to that video if you haven't watched it yet. Well, every time your sweep is circular, meaning that the resulting sweep is a solid circular cross-section, we don't need that second sketch. When we go to Features and then Sweep, we can just use the Circular Profile option next to the Sketch Profile 1 I pointed out and used in the previous video. Here, we can set the diameter of the circle that we will be sweeping the path with. In this case, the wire diameter 2.5 millimeters. Now the only thing that we have to select here is the path for the sweep. We click on the helix and click OK. And we're done. 
We have a plain end spring that has a wire diameter of 2.5 millimeters, a coil diameter of 28.5 millimeters, and a free length of 164.1 millimeters. Now, what if we want to add two coils to this spring and make it squared ends? To do this, we can go back one step before we swept the path and add the extra coils. The end coils in a squared end spring are of course not completely perpendicular to the axis of the spring. That first or final squared coil cannot begin and end at the same height value, otherwise it would be intersecting itself. Therefore, one end of that end coil should be at least one wire diameter below its other end. Let's do the bottom one first. We create a helix by going into Insert, Curve, Helix. We select the top plane just like before. We create the sketch of a circle with the same 28.5mm coil diameter. And now we want a helix going down, not up. To do this, we select the Reverse Direction option. Now it's going down, which is good. But notice that it does not continue the same path. This new helix almost looks like a mirror of the top helix. To reverse this, we select the counterclockwise option. And now the new helix in yellow is a continuation of the old one in blue. Finally, instead of 13 coils, we only want one. And even though it makes no difference here because we only have one coil, we want a pitch, not height, of a wire diameter, which is 2.5 millimeters. Although let's give it a 2.51 millimeters to give it just a tiny gap. Now we do the same on top. We first create a plane that is parallel to the top plane at a distance of 161.6 millimeters, which is where the first helix ends. We create a helix. We draw the same 28.5 millimeter circle centered with the origin. And because this is just an extension of the first helix, and we should therefore have the same parameters that that original one had, we uncheck the reverse box and we make it clockwise. That way, the new yellow one is a continuation of the old blue one. We combine the three helices with composite curve, just like we learned during the previous video. And now we use it to create a sweep with a circular profile of 2.5 millimeters. And we're done. We have a compression spring, squared end, with 15 total coils and 13 as the number of active coils. Now let's put into use what we've learned here with this hand gripper. To make this part, we'll create a helix, sweep it, and extrude some rods from both ends. Add some fillets at the edges of the larger rods, and maybe even give the grips a surface appearance. We go to Insert, Curve, and Helix. We select the top plane, and draw a circle 0.7 inches in diameter. We set its Defined By parameters to Pitch and Revolution. We know its pitch to be 0.12 inches, and to find the number of revolutions, we look carefully at the drawings. We see that there's one, two, three full coils, and a fraction of a coil. That fraction of a turn is not exactly one half turn more, because in that case, the angle between lines would be zero. It's less than half of a turn, and since the angle between them is 30 degrees, it means that the revolution is 150 degrees. This means that it's 150 over 360 of a full turn, or 0.416 repeating. Therefore, the total number of revolutions is 3.416 repeating. With the helix going upward and in a counterclockwise direction, we click OK. We now sweep this path with a circular profile that has a 0.12 inches diameter, the wire diameter. We now have two options. We can either delete the sweep and extend the helix with two sketch lines that are perpendicular to the end surfaces to then sweep the entire wire, or since we have two separate extrusions for the handles anyways, we can use those end surfaces to extrude some rods. For example, for the end at the top, we select Extrude, we draw a circle on that plane with the same wire diameter of 0.12 inches, we center it with a concentric relation, and we extruded 0.8 inches, making sure that we're not merging the geometries. Otherwise, this can result in a zero thickness geometry error, which we'll learn about later. And now we repeat this process for the handle itself, this time using a diameter of 0.4 for the circle, and an extrusion length of 1.6 inches. With one of the handles done, we do exactly the same for the other one. 
First the extrusion of the wire and then the rod extrusion for the handle. Now we add the fillets, which have a radius of 0.06, this coming from subtracting 0.14 from half of 0.4, to both the left and the right handle. And we're done. We can assign it a plain carbon steel material, and we can right click on the surface of one handle, select edit appearance of the face, and look for something that has the texture of the rubber that these grips usually have, including selecting its color. And we do the same for the other one. For other videos of this SolidWorks course, make sure to check out the links in the description below, where you'll also find the links to the playlists of other engineering courses. Thanks for watching.